So what we're saying after this Alan Watts video is, what do I truly desire? Um, and I know the connection between answering that and relating that to your photography can seem a little vague and a little maybe impersonal right now, or it, you can't connect the dots. Um, but for whatever reason, I have been able to follow this um, through with a couple of experiences that really related to what do I really desire. Um, OK, so I'm going to share. I, I answered it myself, the what do I truly desire. Um, I hope you guys are okay with me sharing stuff that I wrote. It's, it's hard for me, so <laughs> I like I I was just about to start and I was like, I don't I don't want to read this. <laughs> so this is what I wrote. Um, I'm scared to write this. <laughs> That's actually my first sentence. Um, some days it's so dark in my mind, and sometimes I worry that writing it down is going to make it more valid or convince me that what I'm feeling is true. I want to be happy. I want to believe in more than waiting to die. I want to live with a sense of peace. I want to be in love. I want to live in surroundings that inspire and calm me. Sometimes this world seems so fake, not just superficial and meaningless, but actually illusory. In a way, it's comforting to feel that there is more beyond what I can see, but it's also giving me a sense of detachment. Sometimes nothing seems to matter or make an actual difference. I think I want what we all want, a sense of purpose, meaning. I want, to be my life, I want my life to be more than just the distractions between waking up and going to bed. If there is a God, I want a personal relationship with him or her. I want to feel that life is more than consuming. I want to know why I am here. I want to know the purpose of my life. Art seems to now hold some key for me. It is the most tangible experience that it invokes something deeper in me. Some passageway to per places that seem perpetually just out of reach. I oscillate between how serious I want to treat art. Sometimes it feels like everything to me, and sometimes it feels like just a facade masking deeper issues and thoughts. I want the courage to be able to incorporate all of this into my work. What am I meant to do? Is the fact that all of these questions I am obsessing over are classic midlife crisis questions telling? Is this part of the plan? Is this something we all have to face? Do we all have to come to terms with this? Do I need to be loved? Why do I want to perform? Why am I craving admiration? Is it weakness or is it something about me that means something? Um, some of that is hard to face because there's I mean, there's both sides of that. There's the encouraging, and then there's the discouraging, and both of them are accurate. I, I want to use art in its weird, intangible ways it makes people feel to find other people that feel like I do. I came from an awful, awful dark place, and through this got to a somewhat better place. Not got to the end, not won, not figured it out. But I used it to identify things that were seriously, seriously lacking um, in my life. And I used it to work on those to have some profoundly meaningful experiences. Not just like, oh, I wanted to meet this musician, I did. I wanted to go to Paris, and I did. I wanted to travel and see things, and I did. But like we talked about answering deeper why questions. Um, and so I'll, 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 I'll try and share a story of what do I truly desire. Um, in the middle of, like I talked about, just being really dark, suicidal, depressed, confused, angry, alone, all that, um, I found a couple of bands that really changed my life, really got to me. Um, and the bands aren't important at all. It, it has nothing to do with the story. They were AFI and the used for me, but it's not like, go check that out. I'm, you know, what you connect with will be because of who you are. Um, but in that place um, that I found them, it had a very interesting effect on me. Um, I was the oldest child in my house, and I grew up, and my parents weren't really into like 
popular music, you know? It wasn't like the stuff they listened to or, you know, they, my dad was into like Broadway musicals and my mom had some stuff, but being the oldest and being so introverted, I kind of grew up without the like exposure to like some of pop culture, you know? Like when I went to junior high, like I showed up and kids were wearing like Green Day and Weezer shirts and I was like, what's going on? Like, <laughs> We like bands so much, we wear their shirts. Like, <laughs> they sing songs and we care that much about it. Like, I honestly had this, like, I didn't understand the involvement with art in that way. Um, and that, that kind of continued. I never really had this, I, like I said, I wasn't interested in art as a kid at all. I wasn't this artistic soul. I didn't have this expressive and connect and this, doesn't mean anything, but when you paint it like this or you say it like this, people relate to it and then you communicate like that. I didn't understand the process. So when I was in this awful, awful place, um, I just found these CDs. Gosh, I don't even know how, you know, you just stuff comes into your life. Um, and this band they used, they were from Orem, the same city I grew up in. And three, I think, of the four of them were raised Mormon. And they make this extremely intense, emotional, screaming genre. They almost, in, they almost invented it. They certainly perpetuated it. And when I found some of the songs, I was like, I had that oh my gosh moment. Like I heard something in the music and read something in the lyrics that matched something I was feeling in a way I didn't even understand was possible. And that was like, I was probably like, 21, 22, 23, and it was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I just latched onto it in the way I'm sure lots of depressed kids do. That's how you end up, you know, it's probably like someone that would have loved The Cure in the 80s or something. Just, I was like, they can feel this exact same thing. And that was so powerful to me. And then I had that revelation. I am supposed to be a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to, be, oh, clearly this is it, you know, like I've never associated with something like this in my entire life. And facing the reality that my voice is unbelievably bad and I have no musical inclination of <laughs> any kind was kind of devastating. Like, oh no, I can't do that. Um, and I mean... I thought about like playing some of the songs, but it, there's just no point. You know, you'll hear music you don't like and then you're just turned off to the story like, oh, that doesn't do anything for me. But just like some of the lyrics in their songs, like the very first song I ever heard of them, the start is, as we trudged along through the mud, we tried to call it home. We're not all right, not at all, not for one second. That's like the first line of their first CD. And I heard it and I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, and, and I mean, it just set me on this path. and I. It's funny because it's another one of those story elements where it didn't, the next day I found my calling. I didn't take a picture for like three or four years after I had this experience with the music. But I became so just consumed with the, you can express yourself this way, you can deal with these problems in this way. Um, and I had a friend, I was working on a movie, like I said, I was working on movies at the time. And I had heard the used CD before, but um, he came to me and he was like, Ryan, you, you gotta listen to this song. You're gonna love it. And I was like, oh yeah, I know him, I like him. And he was like, and it was another one of these moments like with the woman who asked me to take her per picture. He was like, no, it's not about like, you're gonna love this song. He was like, this is you. Like this, this like matches you, like your energy, what's going on, like, and he played it for me and it was so true. I mean, it just blew me away. It's not one of their more popular songs. It was never a single, but I like connected to it so powerfully that three years later, when I started like, I found photography and I, this medium where I could say something was thrust upon me, something in my psyche just whiplashed back to that, like this feeling this is what you're trying to do like can you do what you thought you had given up on because you couldn't sing or play an instrument can you do that with photography and I don't know if any of you guys have seen my Facebook or whatever I almost always post lyrics with my images and it's almost always either the used or AFI 
And that a lot of people, I don't, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if people think it's like gimmicky or trying to tie it into the popularity of the band or something. But for me, it's a constant reminder of this had this effect on you. Keep this in your cycle of energy. Keep this in your mind as you're creating that these are the things you're trying to say. This is the communication you want. And I edit to very specific music for photo shoots. And it's not diverse. I'm not, very, I'm not one of those people that's interested in finding new bands and discovering new music. Like, I have these memories of when this music saved me. And I want to keep bringing that up as I work on making art to try and bring that into my images. And I'm not even saying that's successful. You know, whether or not anyone gets anything out of that or whether it adds or detracts from the images, I really don't care. Sometimes people write like, you know, what does this have to do with it? Or that's a great song, but what are you doing? Or I love that band. Or, you know, some people say, wow, that really fits with the image. But that's, that's not the point. I'm not doing it for anybody else, and I'm not going to quit doing it because it's a personal reminder of why I'm doing it. Um, and the reason I tell that story is that realization for me was profound in why I wanted to make art and why I wanted to take pictures and what I wanted to communicate and how I wanted to communicate it. And then just flash forward six, seven miserable years, you know, of just not, still not understanding why I was doing it. So many of my story elements, the important stuff happened and I can't see it's important until I look back at it. And I hope as you're listening to this, you can kind of internalize that, that it's, you're, you're not waiting for that breakthrough when you realize everything's going to be okay, when you realize you've found your direction as an artist, when you realize that you made it, when you had now how it's going to happen, that maybe it is happening right now. And five years from now, when you're at the place you need to be at, you're going to realize it and to just kind of keep that message with you right now because now I'll give you the rest of the story and looking back at it. Um, <laughs> sorry. So I had this experience with this music, and then I started shooting, and then a fashion photographer answered my email, and then I started shooting with models, and then I started trying to find wardrobe and makeup artists and cool locations and funky hairstyles, and I didn't care about it, but it didn't feel wrong. It felt like something I was doing. Kept doing that, eventually a makeup school called me and said, we have students that do makeup. At the end, they do a final makeup project. We need photos of it. Will you come document it? And I thought, yeah, that sounds like I'm not very good at working for money, but like, I can probably do that. I now know how to take pretty pictures of pretty people with makeup on their faces. I guess I can do that. So I went to a meeting, and there was the one woman who was there, and there was the person who taught the class, and her name was Danielle Donahue. And she is, flash forward, she's now, she'll be one of my best friends for my entire life. But we just clicked, like, you know, just one of those things, like, you know, and I didn't really care about the makeup school, and I didn't really care about the image. You know, it's like, what am I doing? I care about this stuff that means something to me, and I'm out here taking pictures for $100 of this. I don't care. Why am I doing this, you know? I don't know if any of you feel that, but sometimes you just have this urge to just like drop the crap and like run away to try and find the stuff that matters. Sorry for not looking at you guys on the ends. I, I have a hard, I just have to <laughs> keep focusing. You, you like got my attention because you're right in the line of sight. Um, we can all switch around. Yeah. So I had this, this moment like that. But I kept doing the makeup school things, and then we became friends. And she was like, well, we should work on stuff together. And we just got to know each other. And, we, and she's the one that did the makeup on the Kodak ads. And we just had this developing relationship. And then she started dating someone. And he was the drummer who founded The Used. And, there's, there's, and then that. And then I met him. And then. You know, I told you I met Tanya at a workshop about directing that I didn't associate with, that I didn't want to work like that, that made me uncomfortable, that wasn't a breakthrough moment for me. And then as time goes by, the guitarist of The Used, his wife was on American Idol, and she's awesome, and she has a new project coming out, and they needed an album cover. 
And Quinn, who's the guitarist, called Brandon, who's the drummer, and said, we need, we need someone to do the pictures for my wife's album. Yeah, Ryan, you should use him. And so then they called me and they said, we need this shoot, and they described it to me and the expressiveness that it would be and the direction it would go. And I had this moment of like, oh shit, it's so close and it's not going to work. <gasps> I said shit on the video, Michael, I'm sorry. I'll tone it down. <laughs> um, I had this moment of this, this is, you know, I'm getting so close, but I, this isn't totally my skill set. I work, I don't know if I can pull this off. And I had to have this moment where I wanted it to be what they needed and I wanted to work on it, but I knew I didn't have all the skills necessary for that. So I called Tanya and I said, Tanya, they need this shoot and it's exactly your forte, but I want to work on it. Can we just, we just come do it with me? Can we, well, can we just come shoot it together? Um, and she said yes. So they flew out and we did this shoot for them. And they were just such amazing people. You know, as I started talking to Quinn and I started talking to his wife, I just said, I just, you know, and I laid it out. I said, Quinn, I, you know, I don't want to make this uncomfortable but, or anything, but like, I've got bucket list things and like thanking you in a non fan letter way for what you did is on there. And we had an hour long conversation where I just told him this, where I just said, like, this is where I came from. Your music basically saved my life. It gave me something that I associated with that set me on an entirely different life course that has now led me to this. And the shoot went amazing. And I couldn't have done it without Tanya. And part of that experience for me was admitting that I couldn't do some of it and getting help with it and doing that. And then he said, we're recording. He said, we're recording an EP down in California. Um, if you want, I can set up a day where you can come and shoot with the band while we're doing that. So I drove down to California and it was going to be one day, just a favor, just a favor to me for doing the shoot and whatever. And I went in to California and I met everybody. And I mean, I, you know, I was just overwhelmed. And we ended up having this conversation on the day of like, so, you know, what's going on with you guys? And they said, well, we're down here doing this EP because we feel we've been sort of overproduced on our last few albums. We have a lot of this raw energy. We have this, we want to make this more tangible thing, this more real thing. This is what we're producing. And I showed up to shoot it all, and I was shooting it on my Leica cameras and on Polaroids. And they said, why are you doing this? And I said, because I have this connection to my art, but when it's digital, it feels overproduced and it doesn't feel tangible enough. And I wanted to have this tangibility and this rawness and this connectiveness. And it was like, oh. <laughs> like, I mean, we, were, we had the same answer. We were on the same page. And after the one day, they invited me back a second day. And after the second day, they invited me back to shoot the rest of the recording. And after the recording, they invited me to take their new band photo. And after the band photo, they invited me to shoot the cover for the new album. And after shooting for the cover for the new album, they invited me to come on Warp Tour with them. And after Warp Tour, they invited me to come up the West Coast with them, and then to shoot their new band photo, and then to work on a documentary project for them, and then to shoot the cover for their next album, and to spend the next year working on a long-term documentary project with the band that basically saved my life. Wow. So that's where I'm going after this. Um, and I share that not as a if you want to marry Justin Bieber bad enough, it will happen. <laughs> if you, th that's what I mean about those levels of why questions is, I, I had other dreams. There's a Sports Illustrated model named Cynthia Dicker, who I think is the most beautiful human being in the world. And I want to shoot her. Why? Because she's so beautiful. Why? Because they would make great images and I'm good at taking pretty pictures of pretty people. Why? Because we'd make really cool stuff and people would think that was awesome. I'd look really cool. Why? Because it'd be fun. Why? Because I'd get a lot of likes on those Instagram posts for sure. <laughs> why? Because that's fun. You know, and then it just starts leveling out of why I need to do that. But looking, you know, back before this happened, it was like, I didn't want to sit down with the used and tell them what happened. Why? Because I was a terrified, scared little kid and I didn't think I was going to make it. 
Why is that important? Because I found something in them that set me in a new direction. Why? Because it changed the course of my life and made me believe in things that I didn't about art and the ability it has to transform people. Why? Because I want to pass that on. Why? Because I want to work on something so meaningful to me that I'm pouring myself into the images with people who I know are coming from the same place. Why? Because that's a transformative life experience that I'll take with me till the day I die that'll change the next things that happen to me. Like, you know, the more you can like identify what you care about, the more I think it sets you on that path. And I don't so much believe in it as a your wildest dreams will come true. I think there might be the same value in just answering those questions even if it doesn't happen. Even if I hadn't gotten this chance to do it, I think answering those why, 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 why questions still could have set me on a path of you know what kind of work you want to do. You know the kind of images you want to make. And maybe you need to perfect some technical skills and position yourself better. You know, I'm not trying to discount the like marketing or business or promotion side of it. You know, maybe you get to that point and realize you have to make progress in these other areas to be capable of making the kind of images you want to make. But, but I, just from a personal, personal standpoint, I know it's possible. I know that with no place to start from, no artistic talent, no reason in the world, if you can be honest enough with yourself to identify things you care about this much, you can start working on projects that will mean that much to you.